Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and look at a second version of this program that uses the PyFace digital board. So there's a handful of these that I handed out. I don't have them for everyone. I thought there was one up here. Uh, if you have one of these, we can, you can install your Raspberry Pi, but you need to shut down your Raspberry Pi first. Don't just plug it in. Also, note that it installs to be like right on top of the Raspberry Pi. Don't rotate it 180 degrees so it's hanging off like some tumor. That's not the way it's designed to go on. Um, so this has a number of things on it. It has a series of buttons. It has a series of output LEDs. Both the buttons and the LEDs also have these screw terminals next to them. So if you don't want to use the buttons that are soldered to this board, if you don't want to use these LEDs, you can use these screw terminals to connect to other LEDs. You can use these to connect to other buttons. Um, these are just on here for your convenience. It also has two relays. So these LEDs are like simple outputs. They're if you just want to power a small LED or something. If you want to do something high power, like a bigger light, or uh, you know, if you actually want to turn on and off a stereo or something, you would use these relays. These relays turn on and off with LEDs 0 and 1. So there's eight LEDs. 0 and 1 are on the same channels as turning these uh, relays on and off. So what we're going to do is we're going to use both the, we're going to use two of the, we're going to use the lights and the buttons on here such that when our alarm's playing, if you touch one of the buttons, we want it to close the alarm. So it's like a snooze button. And then we also want it to flash the LEDs while it's playing. So if it, I mean, you could stop playing the music altogether and the flashing LEDs could just be your signal. So uh, we'll take through how to use this. Um, if you need, if you want to install it, if you have one sitting in front of you, there should be five of them out there. You can go ahead and install it. Before you install it, shut down your Raspberry Pi first. So the command to do that is sudo shutdown dash h now. So shut down your Raspberry Pi, wait for the screen to go blank. When it's gone blank, plug it in. Uh, if you don't have one, hopefully your partner does, you can watch off them. Um, the concepts are going to be the same. So go ahead and shut it down and plug in the Pi Face Digital. When that's done, unplug the power, plug the power back in, and that'll start everything back up. So I'll give people a moment to do that. That's a null pointer to reference in the kernel. <laughs> Did it crash a boot? I, no, I booted up and I was able to use the keyboard. Are they an Uh No, I think I have them all handed out. It's almost a pretty stone. I don't know what you've done, son. <laughs> Is it doing that every time this SD card is probably working? It was, it was totally working. I was doing great. I had internet. And, uh, <laughs> okay. I know, this is, this is why we can't have a nice thing here. Installed. If you have one, where are the five that are out? Who has one? One, two, three. Oh, okay. So someone can use that one. Um, and there should be a fifth one somewhere. Can you would see this hair box lying around. We got dropped it up here. Um. No. Oh, yep. Who wants one? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. There's no one in the back row has one? Okay, so once you get that stuck on, um, there's a lot of ways you can use the PyFace Digital. Someone has gone to the trouble of writing a fairly nice Python library for it, so that's what we're going to use. The Python library is available from GitHub. I've already installed this on the SD cards I'm using, but if you were setting up your own SD card, this is where you would get it from. So if you just search PyFace on, uh, on GitHub, it'll pull up this repo. You basically need to download a copy of this repo and follow the installation instructions. I've done this for you, but if you were doing this for yourself, here's where you'd get it. There's actually two versions of the library. There's a Python 2 version and a Python 3 version. I've installed the Python 3 version. That's what this is. Uh, there's a Python 2 version as well that you can also find up there if you want to use it. So 
That's where the code we're going to use came from. It's already been installed on your machines, but if you were doing this on a fresh SD card, you would need to follow the installation directions down here. So, uh, the code for the PyFace Digital, I've actually already written as well, and it's actually already in this Git repo. Git has the concept of branches, which essentially ways to maintain different sets of code in the same directory. So we just need to switch to the branch that my PyFace Digital code's on. Everything we've done thus far will work on just plain old vanilla Linux. You don't actually need a Raspberry Pi. This new, the stuff we're doing PyFace Digital is specific to the Raspberry Pi, so this won't work just anywhere. Um, before we can switch branches, if you've made changes, you're going to need to do what Git calls committing them, which essentially okay. saves your changes. So the command to do that is git commit dash a dash m and then some message. This is called the commit message, just to remind you. So changes from class. I mean, you can make this whatever you want. You'll probably get an error message like this. That's, uh, or maybe you won't because the person before you dealt with this. Uh, if you're using Git for the first time, you have to set up the email and username before it'll let you commit anything. So if you get this error message, run these two commands, put in whatever you want here. You know, it doesn't have to be your real name. If you don't get these two, just hang tight a sec while I do this. <coughs> Okay, so once you put those in, if I run the commit again, now it should commit. Uh, mine's going to say there's nothing to commit because I didn't make any changes, but if you made changes, you need to do this first. Is everyone good on that? <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we actually need to switch to the PyFace digital branch. So we're going to switch to the branch that has the extra code in it to actually use this device. So the command to do that is git checkout dash b, uh, this means create a new branch, so we only we'll need the dash b because it's the first time we're doing this. Currently we're on a branch called master, we're going to switch from our master branch to a branch called pfd for PyFace Digital. So we need to give it the branch name, PyFace Digital, and then we're going to tell it that the place you get this branch from is github, so origin means github because that's where we originally pulled our code from, and then the name there is the same. So if you run this command, git checkout dash p, pfd, origin pfd, and assuming you've committed, you should get a message like this that's saying it downloaded the new branch and it switched you to it. So if we now do a git status, we'll see we're on branch PFD. So we've actually changed. Um, we've changed the code in Twitter alarm. So if we open up Twitter alarm again, we'll notice some things are mostly the same, but there's a few differences. First, we have this extra import. This is that library I installed from GitHub. So this is the library that allows us to access the PyFace, um, the PyFace Digital. This gives us all the commands to call it. Um, most of this is still the same. There's a couple of globals I have to set up just because of the way I'm using some callback functions now. Count tweets is exactly the same, nothing changed there. We now have our first callback function. So when you use something like buttons, there's multiple ways you can use them. One of the most common ways is to use what's called callbacks. A callback function is a function that gets called anytime someone presses one of your buttons. Um, so this is just the code that I want to run when a button gets pressed. So I'm calling it snooze. It does a couple of things. It prints this word snoozing to the screen. It then kills this process P. So you'll see down below, P is the name of the process that's running our song. So if we kill it, that's going to stop the music. Um, so here's where we actually snooze, right? We stop the alarm from sounding. And then I also shut off all the LEDs. So the LEDs can be accessed like this. There's eight of them, zero through seven. And then there's a turn off command. There's also a turn on and a toggle command. So it's pretty self-explanatory. We just want to turn off all the LEDs when you press the button. So if you press a button, you're going to kill the sound, turn off the LEDs. The arguments are all the same. We need to now do some setup for the Pi face. Pretty simple. We just have to call the init function. Then we need to initialize essentially a variable that we use to refer to the board after it. You can actually have up to four PyFace digital boards connected to each Raspberry Pi. That's what the zero represents. If you only have, that's the address of your board. If you just have one board, it's always address zero. Uh, you can actually change the address with the jumpers, but by default it should be address zero. So this would be zero, one, two, or three if you have more than one board connected. For our purposes, it's always going to be zero because you're just using one. I need to then set up what's called an input function map. The details of what all this means are on that GitHub site in the documentation. But without worrying too much about it, this just gives me a way to register my snooze function with the button presses. This is where I do what's called registering my callbacks. 
It's where I tell the PyFace what to do when each button gets pressed. So the syntax of that, I'm registering it for all four buttons. So here's the button number, zero through four, so or zero through three for each of four buttons. This is the board address again. My board's just address zero, so it's gonna be zero for all of them. And then the function I wanna call. So this is saying, when button zero on board zero gets called, gets pushed, call the snooze function. Same with button one board zero, button two board zero, button three board zero. Each time I'm gonna call the snooze function. So all of my buttons are gonna do the same thing, right? It's a snooze, you just wanna be able to slap it and have it work. I don't care what the different buttons do as long as you hit one of them, it'll work. So that's running our snooze function. The only other change we made is now when we go to do our action, before we were just waiting one second here to see if the song finished, now in addition to waiting, we have to do a couple of things. I'm gonna flash the LEDs. So I just have some code here that walks through the LEDs one by one and toggles them. So it's gonna basically go down the line and turn them all on and then go down the line and turn them all off, right? It's just a silly little LED pattern. So that's what the toggle command is doing. This LED variable is just an int that keeps track of what LED I'm on. It just counts from zero to seven which is what the mod 8 does. So it just counts from 0 to 7 and then loops back and does it over and over again. Um, the final thing we have to do is call this wait for input. This is where it actually goes and checks our buttons and then does the callback if it needs to. Uh, there's actually a loop happening inside here. So we actually have a loop inside a loop. It's just hidden inside this function. This timeout of 1 means check on the buttons for one second and then stop and come back to this loop and then check on the buttons for one second again. So. Technically, there's a little bit of time when you could press a button and nothing would happen because the buttons are only, presses are only detected when we're inside this function. But this is gonna wait for a second and this is gonna happen in like one one hundredth of a second. So human reaction time means that even if we press the button while it's here, before we're done pressing the button, we're gonna hit here. We're gonna, it's, it's gonna seem like we can press the buttons at any time. Um, but so we have two loops. This inner loop just waits for a second at a time and the season the buttons have been pressed. Then it bounces into the outer loop. The outer loop is going to keep looping until either the song is done or until the song gets killed, which happens when we press a the button. Then it's also going to do some LEDs in between. Make sense? So that's everything. Then we exit when we're done. So if you don't have a PyFace Digital, this isn't going to work because it's going to throw an error message saying it can't find the board it's trying to talk to. But if you do have a PyFace Digital plugged in, you should be able to run essentially the same thing as before. And if you notice, I now have the flashing LEDs on mine. And if I press one of my buttons, it displays that snoozing text and it exits the program. So you guys can go ahead and poke at this for a little while. Um, that's the last main thing we were going to do tonight. So I'll walk around and if people want to play with what you can do in Typeface Digital, I mean, you know, copy and paste my code, do your own thing, whatever. Um, one other thing to note is next Monday before the Monday class, so from 5.30 to 7.30, I'll be set up in here. If you want to come in and just play for a little while before class, I'll send out an email to this effect, but there'll be that two hour period in there uh, where you can come in and play around with some of these Raspberry Pis if you don't have your own. Um, so go ahead, I'll be sticking around for the next 15 minutes or so, and when we're done, um, we'll be meeting again next week. I'll be sending out an email to decide what we want to do next week and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this code's all on GitHub. You can link to it from the website. You can mess with it on your own. Like I said, except for the PyFace digital stuff, you can just run this on a regular computer. It's not quite as exciting because it doesn't make sense to take a real computer and leave it plugged into your stereo for days at a time waiting for certain tweets to happen. Um, but it would work. There's nothing, the, the only thing you really need a uh, Raspberry Pi and a PyFace digital for is this second part. Um, if you wanted to switch back to the first branch, you would just do a git checkout master. That'll switch you back to the code that doesn't have the PyFace digital. All right, any last questions? Okay, go at it. I'll be around.